The Federal and Valevin Hypermarket jointly present the Tutukudi Marathon 2024 to raise awareness on drug abuse. The event is co-presented by Edison Cardio Care Centre Tiruchendur, powered by L. Anand Jewellery and St. Mother Teresa Engineering College, Tutukudi. Hello and a warm welcome to Federal Special Programme, Capital Beat. Vote for Democracy, which is a Mumbai-based citizens' forum, has brought out a startling report which is titled Election 2024 Analysis of Vote Manipulation and Misconduct During Voting and Counting. Now, Vote for Democracy has brought into public domain some alarming aspects concerning the alleged malpractices committed during the conduct of 18th general elections. And they have flagged the questionable role of uh, the Election Commission of India returning officers, uh, they brought out the differences between the votes polled and the votes counted percentage-wise, state-wise, and even constituency-wise. So it's it's a it's a very detailed report, and we have with us. We'll talk about this res uh, report because uh, it raises a huge question mark on the credibility of the Election Commission of India and the manner in which the election was conducted. Joining me now is uh, the retired bureaucrat and the main person behind this report of Vote for Democracy, Mr. M.G. Devasahayam. So thank you so much for joining. It's a pleasure having you on the program. And uh, Mr. Devasahayam was the one who sent a notice to the Election Commission of India in the, in the third week of July. Until date, the Election Commission has not come up with any answer, which means that Election Commission so far is in the denial mode. They haven't said anything on this report of Vote for Democracy. Straight to you, sir. Uh, uh, the, the the notice which was sent by you was a detailed and exhaustive one. You prepared the notice uh, which was sent on behalf of Vote for Democracy. Why do you think that the Election Commission is in a denial mode? 18 July, you sent the notice. And today is 5th of August and we do not know what the Election Commission stand is. See, only those who are hiding something, who are concealing something, will always be on denial mode. They have Yesterday evening, I'm told they've sent out a couple of uh, couple of Twitter messages saying that mischief mongers are doing this. We have been very transparent. I mean, if you are transparent, you tell us. There are concerns. We are the citizens of India. We are the voters. We form the government. We have given them, based on our own understanding, our examination, detailed analysis, certain issues we have flagged. One, two, three, four, five, six, there are about 10 issues. It is their bounden duty to respond point wise. What you are say, said is wrong, what you said is right, or what you said is absurd, absurd. Now keep your mouth shut. They must tell us very clearly. You go and say some mischief mongers are now setting, giving a number, some number which was there up to seven o'clock in the evening, then you know some number. I mean, whom are you trying to fool? We are not a bunch of fools, at least people like us. We have conducted elections. We have counted votes. We have declared elections. We have helped in farming of government. You are Johnny come lately. This is not the first election. 18th Lok Sabha election. Why such questions are being raised now? You are just dismissing it, saying that some mischief mongers are creating problem. This is not only some numbers. The basics and fundamentals of elections have been questioned in our notice. If you must have noticed, uh, notice, if, 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 if you have read the notice, we are starting from the very beginning. The composition of the election commission itself was a, was, was a false exercise. Uh, Mr. Devasaheim, Mr. Devasaheim, if I may ask you, what are the salient points of your notice? I mean, if I may ask you point-wise, one, two, three, four, five, what are the points which you have raised in your notice, if you could share it with our audience as well? Yes. I, I will tell you, there are about 12 points. But I'll, uh, I'll, I'll only deal with the important points. Point yes. number one is the constitution of the election commission itself. Completely biased, prejudiced, partisan. You throw out the Supreme Court orders into the dustbin and then create your own uh, uh, sort of uh, selection panel and uh, create your own uh, um, panel of uh, um, election commissioners and you are conducting the elections. The one people to trust you. Okay. Second was that, you know, the, the, the election itself was against the fundamentals of India's election law. 
Representatives of the People's Act, 1951, clearly says, Section 59, India's election should be conducted by paper ballot. Only as an exemption, Section 61A provides that where you are unable to conduct elections through paper ballot, you can conduct it through EVM machines. But there no, was but a was this a unanimous decision of the election commission earlier also to conduct the elections through EVM. They and can't do it. You know, they make you no, know, they can they can have unanimous decision, doesn't matter. I'm not talking about their decision. They might have taken a decision, but they must convey it constituency wise. For each constituency, because of these reasons, we could not conduct the election by paper ballot. We are doing it by EVM. Okay. If they have done that, they have given satisfied says in in government parlance, in administrative parlance, it's called speaking order. All these are so speaking you are orders. Saying, you are saying, just allow me to interrupt you. You are saying that the law entails that the election should be conducted by the paper ballot. And if they are doing it through EVMs, they have to specify the constituencies why they are unable to do it with the paper ballot. Right. That also the law entails. 61A. Right. They got okay. to do it constituency wise. They have not and done that. 61A of the RP Act, you are saying. Representatives of People's Act 1951. Right. That's what I'm right. Okay. Third point we made is, see, from the very beginning, ever since EVM was introduced, there was a problem for end-to-end -end verifiability. Because everything is happening inside machine. Water does not know whether water, water has been cast as intended, recorded as cast, or, or uh, counted as recorded. The water does not know. For that, they brought in a VV pad. Water verifiable paper audit trail. They are supposed to cross verify it with a paper audit trail. They brought in the machine, attached the machine, but refused to count even a single paper slip. Hmm. And that too, after completing the entire procedure, after everything is over, they refused. They, they filed false evidence in the Supreme Court, misled the Supreme Court, and saying that no, paper is only for sewing. And 90% of the people don't even see that uh, small slip. There has been no empirical study. So deliberately for our last four or five years, the election commission is working to keep the election system as opaque, as secretive as possible. Okay. Okay. What has come, what these numbers, what this is the fallout of that? Because there is opaqueness, there is secret secretiveness, there is no transparency, there is no cross verification. See, let me give you a small example. You go to the bank. You give a 10,000 rupees check. The teller counts it in your presence in the machine. Twice he does it and then gives the cash to you. Madam, aap isko check up kar lije. Aap isko verify kar lije. You verify it. I mean, everything has to be verified. 10,000 rupees counted in your presence. He are being, and here he says, you just press the button, go away. You have no business. You can't verify. We will not tell you. We will not, we will not allow you to find out whether, whether, whether you are I remember when the elections were in process, similar questions were being raised by you, by a lot of activists that, you know, the election process is uh, not transparent. It is completely opaque. There are a lot of question marks. But now that your citizens platform has brought up this vote for democracy report, how do you think will it make the difference? Now that you have the numbers, you have uh, the same voting yeah, percentage. That is why if, if, if the election commission is claiming that they have been transparent. If they have been transparent, if they have responded to our uh, concerns, this problem would not have arisen. See, uh, it is not just like that. We just sat down and started working the numbers. N previous election uh, never did it. We so there were some doubts. There was implicit faith in the election commission of India. As soon as the election commission declared the election, he said, well, thank you very much. I mean, so we, now, we, now you feel the situation is totally out of hands and you cannot let it continue as it has been. Yes. No. Now let so the, the, let me answer your question. So because none of these suspicions, doubts, concerns were addressed, the election commission has hermetically sealed itself. In fact, a group of uh, civil society delegates, about five thousand people, signature was taken, and four ladies and one gentleman, a former ambassador, they went to the election commission of India, give the representation. They were not allowed inside the gate of the election commission of India. I mean, senior ladies who have been very active, and they went. And they were waiting outside the gate, like 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 like, like beggars. They were not allowed inside. I mean, these uh, fellows have completely sealed themselves, sitting inside, hermetically sealed. Now they say they have been transparent. 
So because of this suspension, otherwise we have other work to do. Why should we waste our time on this? So we, we said there is some, something which he, let's find out. Only then, the, actually, the doubt that triggered was election commission firm refusal give the absolute number of votes polled. Remember, they refused to give the absolute number. They gave percentage and that too after 11 days. First race they uh, gave uh, 11 days. Second race, even now, they have now given, not, not given the proper numbers. And every phase they were doing three days, four days, you know, only, and they gave only percentage. So you don't address the concerns. You don't give absolute numbers of votes polled. You give only the percentage. Then after everything is over, then let's say, let's have a look at the numbers. And there is a uh, mismatch between votes count, votes poll and votes count. We have also flagged it, 538 constituencies. ADR also has flagged it. We flagged that and then went further. No, let's go, I said, let's, let's look at, go, go state. How, does, how does the ADR report and your report differ? Because they are almost saying the same thing. No, no, but... AD, ADR report, our report is vastly, Jamina Asmar Gafarak, it is very much different. Okay. What they have done is what they did in 2019. They looked at the election commission's numbers of votes polled and the election commission's own numbers of votes counted. And they found out the discrepancy. Last time it was in 342. This time it has been 538. 538. We, yes. al we also flagged it. You must have seen one of the paras in that in yes. that uh, notice itself is there. But we did not pursue that. We then went further. Let us do an analysis state-wise. When we did the state-wise analysis, was the whole thing was shocking. So we found in Varisa more than 12% variation. Andhra Pradesh more than 12% variation. And in uh, um, uh, um, uh, Maharashtra, more than 8% variation. Many states, 15 states, more than 4 to 5% variation. State-wise. Face-wise was there. I'm not taking state-wise. Then I said, listen, let us be a little more thorough. What, what does this mean? Now, this is important. What does this mean? Then I said, okay, let's formulate a formula, a very conservative formula, that please find out Per uh, constituency average, what is the difference? What is the difference per in per constituency? Then what is it? What, uh, how many people have won with margin less than that average? Okay. So Orissa, take Orissa. Orissa, for instance, has got there is a variation of 42 lakh votes. 42 lakh votes. That means 12.5 percent or something like that. And they have 21 seats. So it comes to two lakhs per per parliamentary constituency. They said, how many people have won with margin less than two lakhs? Eighteen people have won with margin of two lakhs. So this this is called mathematical extrapolation. The presumption is that the logical presumption is that all these eighteen people uh, people have, uh, they they won won because of manipulation. Now oh, you have to prove. I don't understand, Mr. Deva Sahayam, that this kind of spike in the number of votes, as what you're saying, in Andhra, it's 12%, Odisha, it's about 12%, in other states, on an average, it's about 4 to 5%. Now, from where are they getting these extra port, uh, votes? And how will they show it? How will they justify it? Is that the reason they're keeping quiet? Because they don't know how to justify it. That's what I'm saying. We have, as far now, we have only told them, listen, this is what we have found out. And this is what we have suspicion in our mind. But we are not doubting the credibility of the election commission. No, now, but I then think after, no, no, off, no, let, let, let me jump off saying that the basis of this is a suspicion. Like what normally happens if this report is, is, is challenged in the court of law, then again they, are, they will say that this is all based on suspicion. That is where the court of law makes a gross and grievous blunder. See, there is something called circumstantial evidence. There is something called direct evidence. Now, circumstantial evidence is what the what the ordinary people can do. But this data, this data. Wait, 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 this matter is not going to the court of law. We have now election commission is not the court which is responsible for free and fair election. Let me tell you very clearly. In our constitution, we are overburdening the Supreme Court. 
Supreme Court is not sitting there to adjudicate only on election matters. They got 100 other things to do. For election, we have a constitutionally mandated uh, election commission of India under Article 324. You do they when enjoy, the, no, no, they enjoy the same status as that of the Supreme Court. No, but this is the Sahayam. The yeah. Deva Sahayam ji, uh, if, if the court, if, if the election commission is completely mute to what you are saying, and they don't want to address the issues you have raised, your concerns which you have raised in the report. So what do you do? What is the option you have now after the report then, is released? Then, then, then parliament has to deal with this. I, I don't want to go into detail. This this but matter, I would do like the parliament to do. The parliament has got many other many means. They can raise the question, call the order. At the end of the day, uh, uh, election commission of India is part and parcel of the constitution. So you are saying that the MPs will have to raise this issue and yes. then report my vote raise, for democracy. Raise a big issue, call attention motion, big issue. There must be a full-fledged debate and the election commission and then the election commission should be called to order. They must be summoned. The election commission to be summoned before the election uh, parliament of India. See, parliament is a supreme body as far as we are concerned. People have elected the parliament. They are our representatives. Because of this concerns expressed. Parliament must summon the election commissioners. Let them go, go and give them a satisfactory reply. What you are talking you about you can't, is you can't keep on running to the Supreme Court every time. Ha, sorry, sir. Sorry to interrupt you, but what you are saying looks like a very ideal situation. You are saying that the parliamentarians should take up this issue, and the, uh, the election commission of India should be summoned before the Parliament of India. But do you think that it's going to happen? That's not the question of happening or not happening. <laughs> You can't hmm. run every every time to the Supreme Court. There are just two judges. They have other things to do. See, the, uh, su uh, Supreme Court is not the forum at all. In this matter, see, normal election petition, which they have mentioned in that uh, Twitter message, routine election petition within 45 days, the candidate is doing that. Okay, that's a different matter. That is, you go to the High Court of India, you apply, the, um, uh, apply for... This no, are you in touch with the political parties? What is the kind of yeah. response you're getting from the political parties? Because uh, Congress's Sandeep Dixit raised this issue in a press conference day before yesterday. But how many more parties are willing to take up this issue in Parliament? As of now, I do not know. I only saw Sandeep Dixit's uh, press conference. And yes. also I am told some other uh, parties are also evincing interest. At this point of time, I do not know. The point I am making in Elu, is this is not the matter of the Supreme Court, what we have raised. Got it. The got it. ordinary, normal election petitions are, this is laid down in the law. They go to the High Court. They don't go to the Supreme Court. They go to the High Court. Okay. The, the, the MPs, I mean, and the, the, the defeated candidates who have grievance, let them go. But the point that we have raised should be raised in the Parliament of India. Otherwise, the people of India may have to ask nasty questions. I don't want that to avoid. See, when the people start asking questions, you know what is happening in some other countries. I don't want to happen. India is too big for that. We can't uh, take a uh, what, what happened in uh, Venezuela or some other countries. The, the parliament uh, will be failing in their duty if they do not summon no. the election commissioners and uh, take this matter out, uh, sort this matter out as early as possible. Okay. So what is the end result of this report which uh, which you have come up with? No, no. The end result is we as we compile the report, you see a mere report and, and numbers are not going to suffice. So we must put the place it before the election commission as early as possible. So I gave the idea, our group immediately accepted it, and we drafted a notice to the election commission. And you are, we are talking about the election commission. There are other issues also which was flagged in the Election Commission of India. Besides these numbers and other issues, the another very important thing that came out was the Election Commission doesn't appear to have any control over the entire election machinery and system. See, the Constitution of India says Election Commission is supposed to be supervised and direct the elections. Now, <laughs> what is happening now? After the machine has been introduced, Election Commission has zero control. The machine is manufactured by the public sector factories. It is looked, uh, maintained by the engineers. They do their uh, first checking, second checking, third checking, the randomization, whatever. It is all the engineers of two uh, companies 
and right. that to people who have been outsourced. The election commission says no, no allies. And for instance, I'll tell you, we wanted to communicate with the returning officers uh, to tell them to so that, they, and of course, we did communicate. So I put somebody on the job to find out the contact information of the uh, returning officers. I said it must be available to the election commission of India. They said no, we don't have the uh, information. So he put an RTA. And they, he, he got a reply, the RTA, they, we don't have the information of returning officers. I mean, returning officers have conducted the elections under the direct supervision, supposed to, of the but election commission. That be, the I, I don't know. Regarding the returning officers is not available through RTI. The election commission says we have no, we don't have the information of the returning officers. You say shocking. We have no, we, I'm, we, it's there in the notice. You look, the last part of the notice that we have mentioned it. So then, then who have the information of the returning officers? Who conducted the election? I mean, the election commission is atrocious. No, but the returning now, officers. Now, 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 let me let me just add one more thing. So we have advocate uh, Mahmud Pracha. He became a candidate in Rampur. I think you have interviewed him also. Yes, yes. He he using uh, his he, uh, he has asked for uh, documents and he has got uh, the video video recording. And we find that none of the so-called uh, uh, manuals and rules and regulations are being complied with. See, what the election commission is doing is they are pl placing all these manuals before the Supreme Court. They are beautiful by any standards. If you look at the election manuals, their rules, their guidelines, their this, their that, it looks beautiful. It'll impress anybody, or uh, any 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 media people, any international media, and they go and show it to the Supreme Court. They go, "Sir, our pass is here." And Supreme Court believes, "Ah, it's such beautiful," but none of them are being followed on the ground. Particularly uh, after EVM has been introduced, because most of the government officials, we know, we have conducted elections. They have, they don't understand these technical machines. F F L C, this L C, that L C, that O R O A, O R O A, O R O. No, they would have understood the paper ballot very simply. All you have to have a paper ballot and put the paper in the state. And this is very complicated. Only yeah, engineers yeah. understand. But they go and say, "We have got beautiful manuals. Your manuals should be beautiful." But none of them is implemented. And the election commission is taking and do advantage of that. That's a tragedy. So what is the immediate step which you will be taking up? You said that the parliament, you will reach out to the political parties, the political parties yes. should take it up in what, parliament. What we, what, what we are planning to do is, as soon as we give reasonable time, the notice was given on the 18th, three weeks time, then we will uh, we'll contact the members of parliament and the political parties. Now, this is a political issue. This is a democracy issue. This is not the legal issue. And, uh, 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 till now, the legal issue we'll, we'll see later. But as of now, it's a political and democracy, integrity of India's elections. The very, very existence of India as a democracy is in, is, is in serious jeopardy. But if there is no electoral democracy, there is no democracy. No, but supposing if the numbers which you are talking about and the fraud which uh, has been brought about allegedly by your uh, forum, uh, if that fraud is established somehow, uh, maybe in parliament, maybe in court, wherever you go to the court, to the court. So what is going to be the end result? Will the elections be cancelled of 2024? Will they yeah. be counted? Yeah. What will there is, we have already made that as one of the demands. There's a provision in the Representative People's Act uh, which empowers election commission to countermand the election. If the so election commission, counter, even after once weeks... The results are out and a new government is formed, uh, countermanding an election, will that look like a logical uh, end goal? See, the, the entire the entire exercise becomes fraudulent. If the government is formed, so be it. But election commission is not interested in government formation. The election commission is in, uh, should be only interested in free and fair election. So the mandate of the people prevails. The most important, as the mandate of the people prevails. See, people are willing to give the, uh, they are free to give their mandate to anybody. Hmm. But question that we are raising is, has the mandate of the people prevailed? So if they find the 79 constituencies, let them do a post study. Let them, let them, let them countermand the, do, 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 do the real election. Doesn't matter. Government formation doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Uh, doesn't, doesn't mean uh, uh, much so at all. It doesn't what make any difference. What Vote for Democracy is saying if it is proven in Parliament and within the court of law, 
then obviously you are saying that this election will have to be countermanded. See, court of law will take years. That's okay. what I am. I am not. I am not saying at this point of time. In fact, we don't want our report to go to the court of law at all, because okay. that will go into. This is a democracy issue. This is a political issue. The survival of India's democracy is a responsibility of the Parliament of India, as so much of the ruling, Parliament as much of the opposition, as much of the ruling party. No, but ruling party also is part of it. Do, Mr. Devasahai, what can the Parliament do? Supposing if multiple political parties take up this issue, discuss it in Parliament. And then uh, obviously the government will have to respond. Maybe election commission of uh, India is summoned. All that looks highly unlikely. But supposing if it happens, then what what can the parliament do at the end of the day? What will happen? What is the end result of that? It, if it's too, discussed presum about it's too, too presumptuous for me to tell at this point of the time. I can make only a single demand. Parliament must go into the matter in, in great seriousness. And as the as the facts evolve. Take decisions. See, we can't say now, Parliament, I can't dictate to the Parliament what to do. No, no, but I who can will you take this decision? What I'm trying to understand from you is that supposing if the Parliament takes up this issue, opposition makes a hue and cry. But what will the government do? The government is not going to sit with their hands folded. No, they will also come up with countermeasures so that, you know, the fraud okay, is let not... Them, let them, let, let, let there be a healthy debate and discussion and inquiry. See, I, I, I'm not saying right. condemn no. everything. I don't know. Uh, Nilo, please, one minute. I am not saying throw out this government, dismiss this government. No. See, now, over a period of time, there has been a build-up. Now, resulting in a serious doubt on the integrity of the India's electoral process, which used right. to be the pride of the world. We have been part of that. India's electoral system used to be the pride of the world. Right. Now, it has come under very serious doubt. It's the responsibility of the parliament to see that this matter is inquired into in great detail and doubts, if any, are dispelled before we um, further damage is done. That's what I'm trying to do. I'll just I'm pick on one point which you said. You said that there should be a healthy debate in parliament and there should be an inquiry. So supposing if the inquiry discussion can happen, maybe that's possible. That's very much possible that a discussion on this can happen in parliament. Inquiry. Now, what kind of an inquiry do you want? Is a, is a court monitored inquiry or some by some spa, special standing committee, uh, some select committee? How, how will this uh, inquiry they are, happen? They, they already have a system called JPC, Joint Parliament Committee. Okay. Only, so JPC, that, only, only that time, this time, it should not be only political people sitting in the committee. You must have top experts. See, let me tell you, we have some of the top most experts in this country itself. So you were saying JPC into the manner in which the elections were conducted in 2024, right? And with close involvement of top experts, technical and other experts. That is important, independent experts, not the technical committee of the election commission. All right. That is all, that's only because running to the court is not a solution at all. Okay, so you are not even looking at running to the court as an option. You want a healthy debate in parliament. And after the debate, there should be a proper inquiry at the level of a JPC with top experts involved. Yeah, yeah. Running to the court is a very easy option. Okay. Right. I don't know. Uh, that easy option is not going to solve anything. All right. It is All right. A, it's a parliament. The elected representatives of the people must now rise up in defense of democracy. Okay, okay. So, uh, so any other point which we have missed out? I think we've covered most of the aspects. You've explained your uh, uh, notice. You've explained the salient features of what the report talks about. You have also discussed about the end goals of what you want. You want a healthy debate in parliament with a proper inquiry to be conducted at the level of a JPC. Now, what is the likelihood? Do you see this happening? Because there is, there will be so much of resistance from the, from the Treasury benches on this. See, only those who do not abide by principles of democracy will oppose it. Anyone who upholds democracy. Prime Minister keeps on saying India is the mother of democracy. India is the largest democracy. The temple of democracy. This democracy. The, and now, recently, they made a big noise about the emergency. Right. And emergency Hathya Divas bhi manaya. They have also announced the emergency Hathya Divas. Because they are so, 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 so keen on and democracy, Hatya, I think at least there it was stabbed in the open. Now we are stabbing a thousand cuts in, in, in the dark. Hmm. See, <laughs> during emergency in 1975, democracy was stabbed in the back. 
in the mid, middle of the night now we're right. being it is going through thousand cuts on broad daylight right so who so the, uh, prime minister and his party also is duty bound to save democracy right. and inquire and find out the truth whether it is allegations uh, uh, the, uh, true or false right so we that's what, this, that's what that's what that's what that's what i said joint parliament it's not only the opposition right it's right. a ruling joint. party also for ruling party also is duty bound right so uh, let's let's wait and watch now how the political parties pick up this issue this parliament session is till august 12th today is already 5th of august now whether this issue will be raised in this session or in the coming months we'll have to wait and watch but as what mr devasahayam has said that he's very keen that the parliament should take up this issue there should be a healthy debate there should be an inquiry at the level of a joint parliamentary committee that's that's a big big demand which he has disclosed today in our special interview to the federal and there are big news points in this interview as well so we'll keep a close watch on this thank you so much mr devasahayam for joining on the federal it was wonderful having you on the program and one appeal to the viewers who are watching this discussion subscribe to our channel send us your feedback and stay tuned to the federal thank you The Federal and Vailavin Hypermarket jointly present the Tutukudi Marathon 2024 to raise awareness on drug abuse. The event is co-presented by Edison Cardio Care Centre Tiruchendur, powered by L. Anand Jewellery and St. Mother Teresa Engineering College, Tutukudi.